Hi, I'm Shauna Sheedy, and today we will be discussing the water management in Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona is a desert city home to 1.6 million people, and their economy is based on agriculture and industry. To support the growing population and economy, and the expected climate change, water management in Phoenix will need to make changes in infrastructure and the way water is utilized. Today we will look at the current state, scenarios, visioning, indicators, and transitions into the future. So let's take a look at our current state. Phoenix gets its water from the Verde, Salt, and Colorado rivers, as well as drawing water from the underground water aquifers. Much of water comes from the Colorado River, which is fed by snowpack and flows into Lake Mead. Stakeholders in Phoenix's water management include everyone that uses or manages the water involved in agriculture, industry, residential, recreation, conservation, and water storage. So pretty much everybody. Historically, water rights were based on the first, time, first in time, first in right principle. Groundwater had no governance to speak of. Groundwater use was only restrained by the latest pumping technology. Sometimes streams would dry up and wells would go dry and so they would have to be drilled deeper. This was causing conflicts between people with water rights and people drawing from the groundwater. In a feeble attempt to protect groundwater, the state passed its first law in 1948. Then in 1968, the Central Arizona Program, or CAP, was approved by Congress. CAP was designed to transport water from the Colorado River to Phoenix and other major cities in Central Arizona. To achieve funding from the federal government, Phoenix had to adopt the Groundwater Management Act, or GMA, in 1980. This required there to be active management areas and brought about the Arizona Department of Water Resources. Today, due to many years of drought and climate change, the Arizona Water Banking Authority has implemented the Lower Basin Drought Contingency Plan. The main takeaways of this plan are additional contributions to Lake Mead, flexibility for users to store and take delivery of storage even when the reservoir is lowered, and commitment of parties in the Lower Basin to protect the elevation of Lake Mead. Hi everyone, I'm Chelsea Casney and my section is Scenarios, Visioning, and Indicators. To better prepare for the future, it is important to go over possible scenarios. The first scenario is that Lake Mead and the Colorado River dry up. This would lead to many negative side effects like a loss of biodiversity, call for a state of emergency, and suffering from minority and homeless populations. Scenario two is that the city of Phoenix takes steps to improve their water management. This would lead to a growth in the city and an increase in biodiversity. They could make scenario two reality by taking steps like increasing their water reclamation and reducing the amount of water they take from Lake Mead. To ensure that the water supply in Phoenix can stay consistent for a long period of time, they will need to have multiple different solutions. They could add permeable pavers across the city, utilize vertical farming, and have their buildings get leadership in energy and environmental or LEED certifications. Permeable pavers would absorb excess water and use that to recharge aquifers. Vertical farming takes up less space, can be added onto buildings, and uses less water. LEED certifications encourage these buildings to have efficient irrigation, water-resistant plants, and water-friendly appliances. To see that these solutions get put in action fairly and for the entire public, Phoenix will have to include everyone in their decision making. The members of the community should be able to voice concerns about the solutions and even suggest solutions of their own. With this cooperation being brought to everyone in the community, these solutions should be easier to see through. There are multiple indicators that can be used for water management issue in Phoenix. Some of these are aquifer recharge, access to clean water, and reclaimed water. The amount of water in aquifers has been decreasing over the years. In scenario one, there would be a continued decrease, and in scenario two, aquifers would have an increase in water. In scenario one, there would be a decrease in access to clean water due to water shortages, and in scenario two, there would be an increase. In scenario one, there would be a decrease in reclaimed water, but in scenario two, there would be an increase. Hello everybody, my name is Oliver Manifest, and today I'm going to be talking about how we can transition from our current state to our desired future. To get to there, we've set three targets. We've set a 5-10 to ten year target of reaching safe yield, which means that we're recharging the same amount of water into the aquifers as we're taking out of them. And we set a 10-20 to 20 year goal of cutting groundwater use by 80% specifically for agricultural and industrial uses. In addition, we set a 20 to 50 year goal of establishing Phoenix as a closed loop water system, which means 
100% of the water that we use will be reclaimed and used again. We will need to establish effective strategies if we wish to accomplish these ambitious goals. A few of the strategies that we could implement include stopping issuing permits for industrial groundwater pumping, reducing the depth that groundwater can be pumped from, reducing grandfathered rights to pump groundwater, providing government subsidies for household and commercial desiccants, and investigating wastewater reclamation for domestic, commercial, and agricultural use. In addition, we could pursue desalination, but right now that isn't quite economically feasible. In the end, the goal is to reach a closed-loop water system for Phoenix, Arizona. There are a few barriers standing in our way. There is the cultural barrier of a stigma against reclaimed water for drinking in the United States, a political barrier with all the disagreements on different solutions and which ones should be pursued first, and financial barriers around desalination as it's not yet economically feasible. To overcome these barriers, the people of Phoenix are going to need to make some fundamental changes to their values, beliefs, and norms. For their values, they need to emphasize generational wealth and social capital. For their beliefs, they need to focus on long-term planning and research. And for norms, they need to focus on reducing and recycling the water that they use. Water management in Phoenix is definitely a wicked sustainability problem. But with the right planning and with coordinated effort, it's definitely one that we can overcome together.